before I jump into the actual demo, I just want to take a few minutes to set the stage in terms of Rescue Lens and what it is. So as you may know, it's our seamless and secure mobile camera sharing. Um, so unlike Rescue, where you're actually trying to remote into someone's device and troubleshooting that, this is a little bit different. This is about bringing eyes into the room. So it's not so much let me run a bunch of scripts on your computer or see what's going on, but it's looking at something physical. It could be a printer, a router, a piece of hardware, just literally anything physical that you need to get your eyes on. Um, and this is a really critical tool because if we think about the before state and those pain points, it can be a really difficult um, and, a, and a frustrating experience, not only for the technician, but also the customer. If they have uh, are having trouble and they don't know the difference between an HDMI or an HDI cable, for example, that can be really painful. And trying to describe things or not sure where to put a certain plug or something like that, all folks have their own vernacular. There's a lot of back and forth. Uh, people are getting frustrated and it's just, it's painful for both people, as I said. Um, and then in some use cases, you might even need to send your technicians out into the field or in some cases, maybe even uh, require your employees to go into the office. Uh, so that's definitely really time consuming, again, for things that can't be fixed on the computer, but you need to really get a set of eyes on. So that's where Rescue Lives comes in, Rescue Lens comes in, and this is just a solution that really eliminates all of that friction and pain point and gets straight to the issue. Uh, it is an instant and interactive video support. Um, you can almost think of it like FaceTime, except on steroids in terms of, you know, it's encrypted, it can be recorded, it's reporting, it has some great annotation and things like that. Um, but really, it's a way to enable your technicians um, in your organization to remotely troubleshoot or fix or install equipment or any hardware as if you were there. So again, it's getting eyes in the room really quickly. Um, and also, it's a way to be uh, really empower your technicians out in the field to have a direct connection to an expert. So I'd say the two most common use cases I see when it comes to Lens um, is a technician supporting their end user, like an employee in the case of internal IT, or oftentimes it's a technician to technician use case where a technician is in the field, but they might only know certain things. Think about all the brands and manufacturers and appliances out there, things like that. Um, that can be a lot for one technician to have to know everything, every manual. So by using Lens in a tech to tech way, it's a way to empower the tech in the field so that they can learn on the job. Um, and as you can see, I've already started to kind of shift over here to the value drivers. Um, Lens is amazing, and it's actually one of the one of the reasons it's my favorite part of Rescue is the ROI is actually quite incredible, and it's really easy to measure. So by using a tool like Lens and really cutting through all that confusion and back and forth, you decrease your handle time if that's something that's important to your um, organization. You also increase first call resolution. So again, there's less of that back and forth and you're really eliminating a lot of that guesswork. And by doing all those things, you get happy customers or happier employees. And either way, that's a win-win. And especially with CSAT being, you know, one of the most important metrics that folks measure these days. And also there's reduced truck roll. Um, as I mentioned, it's really expensive to send those techs out into the field. Uh, so there's a huge cost savings with that. And when a lot of people purchase Rescue and they start using Lens, they see that the tool actually pays for itself incredibly quickly which is really awesome. Um, and as I mentioned, it's just a way to solve problems a lot quicker. And again, you can empower those less experienced techs so that they're learning on their job and they can learn from other technicians who might be a specialist in a particular brand or appliance or whatever it might be. Um, and it also allows you to really up-level your support experience. This is a unique thing that not a lot of um, folks do, whether for their own organization or even externally. And there's also a decent amount of customization within the tool to really put you and your brand and your organization first. Um, so without further ado, I'd love to show Lens now because seeing is believing. Okay, great. So I'm actually going to start out in the admin center just for one moment, just to show folks uh, where you would actually, and let me just make sure that, okay, perfect. Just to see where you would do this. So this is the rescue admin center that everyone knows today. So all you would simply do to make sure that your technicians can take advantage of this amazing feature is you would go to the specific tech group that you're looking to enable it for. And if you scroll down, you'll see that rescue lens is here. So as long as you have that checked off at the group level, 
that means every single agent here underneath will be able to access that. So for whatever reason, you might wanna have it turned on for some groups or not others, depending on are they just supporting software, level one, is it hardware? But once you turn it on within the admin center, your techs are then ready to go. So with that, I'm going to open up the Rescue Tech Console. And the way you would start using Lens is you would start your session initially, just like you do today for Rescue. However, you might have noticed there is another option here, Rescue Lens. So if you were to click on Standard, this would be what you're probably doing today, which again is to remotely troubleshoot into those devices with the end user there and start supporting them. Um, so if you'd like to do a Lens session, you would simply click on Rescue Lens. Um, and just keep in mind, whatever your last session was, that is how Rescue will remember it. So if I'm doing a Rescue Lens session now, that means the next time I click on Session Type, it will automatically default to here. So now I'm going to put a name in, and I'm going to do Mateo in honor of my nephew's birthday today. And with that, you'll see there's quite a few ways to connect to the end user now. So, and with that, I'm actually going to pull up a phone that I have so that you can see the end user's um, side of this as well. So just give me one moment while I turn on the mirroring here. Okay, here we go, great. Okay, so, and just to be clear, this phone right here, um, this device, this is, again, I'm not remote controlling this, this is just using a mirror and just to show you, again, the end user side of it. Um, okay, so once I'm on, you know, I feel on the phone or chatting with someone and I determine that visual assistance is needed, that this is really painful and I need to get eyes into the room, I need to connect to that end user and I need to do it securely. Um, and this is actually another reason why folks love lens because they might be using FaceTime or something else to, today, but it wasn't purpose built for that. And adding to that, this is platform agnostic because obviously FaceTime, you both need to have an iPhone. And if you don't, then you might have to do uh, WhatsApp or something else. So again, this is really a way to be platform agnostic and get in there. So I could simply create a pin and then my end user would enter that in. They would need to download an app. It's a one-time download. Um, so you, that's available for both iOS and Android. And once it's downloaded in the future, it would automatically just open up. Um, another connection method that we have here is email. Um, so you can actually send the email to the person with the code. So in this case, I'd simply click on email link. We actually have two options if you wanna send it through your default email client or through the log me and rescue servers. Um, and as you can see here, an email will generate and I will send it to the end user. I have their email and then we'll be able to connect that way. And then the other one is link. This will mostly make sense in an in internal use case, which I know about 60% of folks here are today, or unless of course you're chatting with your customers externally. This link then you can send through an email or an instant messenger. And then we also have SMS. And this makes a lot of sense given that, keep in mind, you're going to be leveraging the end user's mobile device to uh, basically have their forward facing camera to see what's in the room. So if you send an SMS, that is another way. Um, for the purposes of this demo, I sent the email, so I will now open that up here on this side and we can see the email. So as we go in here, you can see I have a connection email link sent to me and I can see that it's from my support team. So from there, I would simply click on the rescue mobile link here. And because I had already downloaded the mobile app, it would open up. In the case that this is your first time using it, you would need to download that app. But as I mentioned, for future support scenarios, you wouldn't have to worry about it because it would already be there. Um, and this is just giving a quick intro to familiarize the end user with Lens, letting them know that they're gonna be using their camera to stream live video essentially so that expert can help. Um, just letting them know about they can you know, show and tell and that they can use uh, different features here, including in-app chat, or we also have VoIP as well. Um, and then lastly, just getting the end user's permissions. Of course, that's always uh, important to us. All of our tools are permission-based prompts to ensure the end user is aware prior to doing anything. So this little flow that I went through, again, is just the first time you download the app. And as you saw, I could have skipped it as well, but I just wanted you to know for the end user's experience.
So once you did that, you just have to do a few time, a, a one time configuration in terms of, you know, is Rescue Lens allowed to take pictures and record videos? And again, be, to be clear, this is only during the Rescue Lens session. So I'm going to say, well, using the app, yes. And then we also have a built in VoIP option if you would like. So I'm going to say, well, using the app for that as well. Um, and do you want to allow Rescue Lens to make and manage phone calls? Um, so you can pick whatever one you'd like. And as you can see, um, we now have this um, acceptance for the end user. So I'm going to click on that and just keep in mind that this end user agreement um, is something that would just give permission, again, to make sure everyone's good. And then you can see that we are waiting for the technician here. So on my end as a technician, I see that I have someone in my queue, a new customer. So I'm going to click on that to get the session started. Um, and as you can see, I'm go as the end user, I'll say that I would like to allow notifications. And now you can see my desk, um, my thinking buddy, my Mario. But basically what you can do is you can get eyes in the room right quickly. So perhaps you're trying to explain the difference between these two cables, or maybe there's a question about the dongles or someone's headset. Um, also, just working from a home hybrid environment, again, remoting into a person's computer is great, but what about all these other things when there's a lot of confusion? Um, not to mention back here, um, there's quite a bit going on for like my docking station and all the things that I need. Um, the cool thing is, as the end user, I actually have a flashlight here. So as you can see, if I can turn that on, that can be super useful in certain verticals if it's dark and you're trying to do something and add additional light. Um, and I'm actually going to pull the end user over here now just so we can really zoom in on the uh, technician side of this. So a few things here I want to show is one, you can actually put this in live view. Excuse me. Um, you can put this in full screen, which makes it a lot easier. And you can even actually make it the, the size, make it bigger if you'd like. I want to show the actual size so I can see exactly what's happening here. But again, then you can zoom in or zoom out as you'd like. Um, and what I'm going to do now is do the, to freeze the camera stream. Um, that way the end user does not have to hold their hand there. And now I can start doing different things to help them. So if they had a question or they were trying to figure something out, I can start to leverage these tools here, including the whiteboard, the annotation that I had mentioned earlier. So I can start to mark this up quite quickly and let them know that like, you know, this is number one and you actually need to move that over here to number two. So this might seem really simple, um, this annotation, but again, imagine if you were doing this and you were trying to explain it. It's super confusing. As I mentioned, there's a lot of painful back and forth. Um, and there's a few other things you can do here in session as well. Um, if I want to, of course, I can erase those drawings at any point. I can start over. Um, I also have the ability to take a screenshot, and this can be super helpful. Um, whether it's for learning purposes and you want to actually send it to the end user later, or maybe it's a really common issue and you know you have an internet internally and you want to let everyone know, like, hey, this is, you know, this is how you do something. This is where you, you know, plug in the particular HDMI or whatever it might be. Um, you'll see I also have the option to do screen recording. This is really powerful for training and quality uh, purposes. And keep in mind, this is something that can be turned off or turned on within the admin center if any reason you, you want all sessions to be recorded, for example, or you don't want your technician to have the given option to record a session. Um, that was a screenshot that I had mentioned. And of course, then we can unfreeze the camera stream at any point. Uh, we can also chat here. Um, again, if there's a use case for that, um, a lot of times, and if I show the end user side over here again, you'll see that I can click on that and I can even write back, you know, ask what I unplug, whatever it might be. Um, so there's there's really a bunch of different ways to commun to communicate here. It would help if I could spell. Um, really, I would call these secondary forms of communication because again, you might already be on the phone, um, but if you're not, you can use our chat here. Um, that might be a little bit cumbersome in terms of already trying to use your phone for the camera. So in that case, I would definitely recommend taking advantage of our built-in VoIP. And as you can see, as the end user, I can have the option to um, end this session at any point. And that's really important to give that end user um, that control. And if we were to go back over here, let me just get out of full screen mode. Okay. 
Um, and then you'll see um, just a lot of the features that you might be used to seeing today uh, for those rescue sessions in terms of you might want to be able to have history and notes uh, for a future tech to see or just for your own purposes so you can keep track of what you did. Um, you can also see the history of a given um, agent and all the sessions that you had. And then, of course, just like you see with Rescue Today, we have the audit log over here on the right, just kind of keeping track of everything that happened. So once you are able to remotely solve that issue, um, you can end the session then. And again, the end user can or the technician can. And at this point, yes, I have frozen the, um, the camera stream, so I'm going to unfreeze it now. One last look at Mario, everyone. Um, again, the flashlight, turn it on or off. And now I'm going to end the session. Here's the end user. It's confirming, do I really want to disconnect? I'll say disconnect. And then you can see on the end user send, it's all closed out. So I get a little screen here letting me know the session has ended, how long the session was, and also how much data was uh, transferred during that session. If I'd like to start a new session, of course, for another day or another reason, I would click on new session here, and I can simply enter that pin. Um, but as I mentioned, there were those other ways with email and SMS and things like that. So that's mostly what I wanted to show you. And I think I would just summarize that by saying, as you saw, it was a pretty simple tool, but it does a few things really well. And it is incredibly powerful um, to cut through all of that confusion and really empower your technicians. I've probably only had the experience of using this once or twice, like as a consumer out in the world. Um, and it was for my refrigerator. And it was absolutely amazing because I didn't, and it was actually a technician to technician use case, but that way they didn't have to wait in, uh, for another day to send another technician with that specialty back. Um, so that's just a huge uh, time savers right there. So I really can't stress the importance, the cost savings, and really just a way to wow your customers internally or externally, since not a lot of folks are doing this today. Mm -hmm.